Congressman Tom O'Halloran represents Arizona's first congressional district. He's running for re-election to Congress in the newly drawn second congressional district. O'Halloran and his Republican opponent in the race were both invited to join us for a debate. O'Halloran accepted the invitation. His Republican opponent declined. So with that, Congressman Tom O'Halloran joins us now to discuss the issues. It's good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Same here, Ted. Uh, biggest concern for your district? Well, if you're in Arizona, you have to worry, worry about water, even though we're in a rural section of the state. But uh, it's, it's a serious issue right now. You've been in Congress. What have you done to address that issue? Well, I've been working on water issues in Arizona now for 20-some years. Uh, I've put forward uh, statewide uh, conservation plans, statewide drought management plans, and a statewide plan in 2005. Now, we have to get the people in the Colorado River, the, all the seven basin states, to get their job done, and that is to come together, work together, and the Bureau of Reclamation, we've sent a letter to them to say, sit down people at the table and keep them at the table. What, but what can you in Congress do to ensure Arizona gets its fair allotment of Colorado River water? Well, that, that's a, a total, you know, 1922 is when the uh, Colorado Pact was signed uh, by those seven basin states. That is something that has to be discussed again if they choose to. Uh, but right now, I think out of fairness to everybody, all seven basin states have to do what Arizona is doing, conserving as much water as they can, uh, uh, recognizing that this is a problem. You know, California right now is not trying to conserve uh, to the levels that they should be conserving. I heard the governor of California say, well, by 2040, we'll lose 10% of our water. They don't put any water into the Colorado River. And we do. And the, the idea that we're up to over 40% of our water is lost from CAP right now. Yeah, but, but I, 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 another factor in all of this is the explosive growth, especially in the lower basin states here, Arizona especially. Should Arizona's growth be reconsidered considering these water concerns? Well, 1922, we were hardly a, a blip on the radar. And now we're a major state in this new union, about 15th or 16th largest state in the union. Uh, we, we deserve to have a larger voice in this process, and I would hope we do, and that's what we've been trying to do. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, what I'm talking about, Arizona's growth in particular, we've exploded just in the past 10, 20, 30 years we've exploded. Does that need to be reconsidered? We always have to reconsider how we're going to grow, what we're going to do from the stand, stand. That's why I did a drought management plan and a conservation plan and a statewide water plan. That should be an ongoing pr process of what we're going to do to look into the future, not deal with crisis time after time after time. When you say you did those plans, what does that mean? Did you? I got them through the legislature uh, in Arizona, and that's in the law in Arizona that the state is obligated to do that. But you were they part of that effort as opposed to the only person behind that effort, true? Well, it was my bill. Okay, so yeah. your bill in the legislature. In the legislature. Okay. Right now in Congress, we are continually trying to address the, uh, the issues through be making sure there's funding available. But the Colorado River is, uh, is run by the federal government as far as the Bureau of Reclamation and the Seven Basin States. And they have to get serious. They should have been serious 20 years ago. How do you get them serious? Well, what I do is keep writing le letters out to them and making sure I'm public in my, my statements of where we should be. But I've been doing that in Arizona, Ted, for 20 years. I've talked about water, the future of water in Arizona time and time again. And we still do not get the message across that we have to look at it from a standpoint of how do we keep our economy viable, our, our homeowners, our farmers viable, and, and doing it in a, an appropriate way. Let's talk about the economy and inflation in particular. Why is inflation at a generational high? Why is this happening? Well, a number of factors. You know, uh, first of all, uh, we had a pandemic. That pandemic cost us $5.5 trillion, a bipartisan way of, uh, address of, of addressing it. That pandemic c c continued into the new administration. Uh, we spent money uh, on the American Rescue Plan to address many of the continuing issues under that process, uh, including small businesses, including making sure people did not lose their homes or were thrown out of their apartments, including feeding people. And then uh, additionally, we... I mean, there, there, there was $10 billion used to fund police officers in that proposal, and it, it's, it's worked. 
But Republicans say that the government created inflation, created the problem, certainly enhanced the problem uh, by printing money and just handing it out. How do you respond to that? Well, first of all, uh, who did we hand it out to? Uh, we know that a number of Republican elected officials have taken PPP money and, and used that, some of them to a high degree. But more importantly, we put it to the American people so they would be able to survive, so our economy would end up as the strongest economy in the world. China is going down. Europe's uh, inflation rate is higher than ours. Uh, we are, are, are at almost full employment. I mean, there's a lot of pluses here, and plus the Republicans do not do their math very well. They spent uh, other than $1.9 uh, on the American Rescue Plan. They've voted for almost every other bill that's been there. So are you saying that inflation is literally the price we're paying for getting through the COVID pandemic as we did? The pandemic, the war, ch supply chain from China, which is now still impacted. They have ports closed down. They have cities closed down. Uh, it's a... It's a process that moves together, and the Federal Reserve not moving fast enough to address the issue. Republicans are saying that Congress keeps spending money that we don't have, and that drives inflation. That is chiefly driving inflation. Are they wrong? I would, I would ask them to identify what they would do, what they would not spend, and stop saying just, we are just doing this. I'm a bipartisan member of Congress. I work with uh, Republicans all the time, whether it's a, in my bills, 70-some percent of my bills are bipartisan bills, whether I uh, uh, sponsor one of their bills or they do one of mine. I'm in the Problem Solvers Group. I, I'm, a, I'm in the Blue Dogs, which is the more moderate wing of the party. We're always talking about how we address these issues, but we have had decades of not addressing inflation, decades of, of not addressing health care in this country, especially mental health care. I could go on and on. Um, one thing Republicans uh, would not agree with is uh, de student debt forgiveness. Um, did you think that was a good idea? Do you think that is a factor or could be a factor in driving inflation in the future? I disagree with President Biden that he did not go through Congress. That is our job, to be able to spend that much money and he should have gone through Congress. If it had gone through Congress, would you have voted for it? I don't know. I don't, wouldn't know what the bill looked like. I am in favor of making sure that we have a workforce for tomorrow and that we have a, a people that can be able to buy products in the American marketplace. That's what we're trying to do is bring some of the, what they're saying don't spend is money that we're spending to bring back our market share, to bring back our economy into America, and to bring, be, bring back those jobs that were lost through the decades. Again, but as far as the student debt now, what, what you would vote on is what happened right now, what the president uh, basically ordered. That is $10,000 forgiveness, uh, an extra $10,000 for Pell Grants. Is that something that you would if go it for? came before Congress, I would want to see people that are in technical schools be able to address it, people that are being trained for our labor force in the future, uh, I would look at that. Uh, President Biden just yesterday uh, defended uh, law enforcement. He said he's against defunding the police. He's against defunding the FBI. Uh, defunding police was a big uh, saying in some Democratic circles. How did you take that phrase? Well, it sure wasn't in my circle. I'm a former homicide detective in the city of Chicago. I wrote the president, uh, he did a, he's identified $32 billion to be able to spend on training and everything else for police officers. Uh, and I, I'll tell you this, that I wrote him a letter and most of his, uh, a lot of, I should say, of his executive order on this stuff is from my letter. So, uh, and uh, I, I just, I'm enraged that we would think that the American public has clearly voted that they want safe streets, safe families, their families protected, and that we're still going down this path of somebody giving a rumor that we should defund the police. I, I didn't see that discussion at all in Congress over that time. Um, the president also just yesterday said he showed that he is still determined to ban assault weapons. Would you ban assault weapons? Well, we voted to, to not sell them. We voted not to take weapons away from people that have them already. Uh, the, the I don't know what his bill looks like. Well, there once was a ban on assault weapons. That was repealed. Should that repeal be repealed? I have no idea. We haven't seen anything yet. But I, I voted for what was put on by the, by the White House and by uh, the Congress. Should citizens 
be have the availability have should assault weapons be available to citizens non-military non-law enforcement assault weapons that were once banned i think that they're terrible weapons that I, I, my projection is that it's not good for health of our safety if we want safety in our streets with our, which i know the republicans want uh, then we should put it in a position that we do not have these automatic type weapons available out there other than maybe like some other countries do and lock them up somewhere if you want to go fire them you have to do that at a certain location so forth um, your opponent says the border situation is a quote invasion is that the proper word for what's going on down there? Well, it's not an invasion. It's a bunch of countries in the south of a, our country. They're, they're in a shambles, whether it's politically or whether it's economically, and people trying to escape. I landed in Honduras, uh, well, maybe three years ago. We weren't allowed to leave the military base in an armored vehicle to view the country because of the dangers within that country. And so uh, I think they're, they're expounding on something. Again, it's about... They throw something out and say, this is what's occurring, and there's no follow-up on it. How there's should, no, it, what well, we what should the follow-up be, though? It, first of all, do you see a crisis down there at the border? I do, and that's where I've written four letters to the uh, uh, um, Homeland Security Secretary identifying clearly what is his plan, what is he going to do about it. I've let the White House know my feelings. I've made it public many times. What are those I'd, feelings? What are your plans? What are those feelings? Beef up the Border Patrol, make sure that we have enough... Uh, uh, courts to address the amnesty issue, identify how, how the, the people are going to be held in, on this side of the border. Uh, you can, if there's inhumanity over there, there has to be something over here that makes it the same. I was down there just recently. There's too many people escaping. 50% uh, of the people that come across right now are, are not caught. We have to do something about that. That's, we have to, con this is our country. We have to control our borders, but there's more ways to do it than, than just one idea. We need to put more electronics. We may, need to be up in the air. We need to have more personnel, and we de definitely need to have a court system that works. Do we need to keep Title 42? Do we need to keep that in place? I don't know yet. I haven't seen the plan. They don't, that's what I've been writing about. Should, should Title 42, well, should, the plan is to either keep it or don't keep it. Should we no, keep it or not No, the plan is if you're not going to keep it, have something set up in place before you, you do away with so it. So if something isn't set up in place before, I'm, keep it. I've been against it all along, yes. So against getting rid of it. G against getting rid of it. If something isn't, isn't uh, taken. Exactly. Last question here. Um, would you support Nancy Pelosi to stay as Speaker if Democrats retain control of the House? I, I don't. That is a far-off decision, and I'm, I'm not going to comment on that. Not at all, huh? Not at all, no. All right, Tom O'Halloran, we thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Ted. Good to have you here.